So we're going to talk about the Laplace transform and how to visualize it. We're going to use this example to start with, with a function ws, which has this form. And you can clearly see here there are two poles, one at s equals minus 1 and the other at s equals minus 2. And we're showing the S plane here on the bottom. So this is sigma, the real component of S, and omega, the imaginary component of S. And we can see that the value S equals minus 1 is minus 1 real and 0 of complex. And if I move this around and look straight down on top, you can see clearly minus 1, there's a pole uh, at, with zero imaginary, and at minus two, there's a pole with zero imaginary. And this is uh, the plot of the Laplace transform. You may not have seen it this way before, maybe just simply looked at regions of convergence, but this is what the Laplace transform function actually looks like. Of course, for a causal system, this function only holds for real values bigger than minus 1, real values of s. So uh, here I've got another plot in the top middle which shows exactly the same plot but only for the region of s where the real value of sigma is bigger than minus 1. And we can see here just a different way of visualizing it. Uh, this is the actual Laplace transform for a causal system because this function only holds in this region because the function only converges, the Laplace transform only converges in this region. Now, don't forget, the Laplace transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform, and the Fourier transform exists, is, is in the Laplace transform along the line where sigma equals zero. So along this line here, where sigma equals zero. And if we spin this around, we can look into this, uh, under the pole, and look in there, and we can see um, the line where sigma equals zero, it would go up in one of these contour lines here and come down. And that is the Fourier transform along that line. And I've plotted it here in the top right hand uh, corner. This is the Fourier transform, this is the imaginary axis, so this is the frequencies. Zero here is the DC in the middle, and the peak is, uh, in this case, because of where those poles are, we can clearly see when you look along that line, you're going to get a function like this. And this is a low pass filter. If this was the impulse response, if this was the impulse response of a, uh, of a system, then that system would act like a low pass filter. So low frequencies would get through the, through the filter and high frequencies would be suppressed. And I've drawn this with a normalized gain because you can always amplify your system. Uh, so even though over here in the Laplace transform, the gain of that curve there is not one at the peak, uh, you can normalize it uh, to be one at the peak. So let's look at the ones along the bottom. And what have we done here? Well, we've just shifted the poles along to be more negative. So we've got S is minus three and S is minus four is the location of the poles in this example here. And you can see this picture here uh, looks very much like the one above, except clearly the poles have moved along to minus three and minus four. And the same holds with this picture here, looks the same, except uh, the region of convergence now goes from minus 3 to infinity rather than minus 1 to infinity. But again, uh, you can look in there and see where the Fourier transform is along the zero line for sigma equals zero. Now we've moved the poles further away, so when we look in here, it's one of the contour lines that's lower down. Uh, we're going to scale it so that the peak is at 1, which as I say you can always do with an amplifier. Uh, and what we can see then is that if this was your filter, your new filter with the pole shifted to the left, then more of the high frequency components would be getting through this filter, would be passing through the filter compared with the first case we looked at. So this is more narrow bandwidth, so lower frequencies pass through but the higher frequency is suppressed. Here, more of the higher frequencies get through. So you can see that by moving the poles around, you can design filters with different responses and respond differently to different frequencies uh, that you might put in in signals into your filter. How do you change and move those poles? Well, that's by changing your circuit design, uh, putting different resistors, different capacitors, different inductors that will give you a different transfer function 
from your circuit. And for a video on how to go from a circuit design to a transfer function, uh, you can see the link below, below this video. Uh, one thing I'm now going to do is just look at introducing a zero into this. So, so far we only had a pole, uh, sorry, two poles. I'm going to introduce now a zero in each of the cases. Uh, and this is, we can see here by, in my MATLAB code, introducing a term in the numerator, S minus one. So what happens now? Well, the poles are in the same place uh, in all these uh, graphs, uh, but now we can see an indentation at sigma equals positive one. Uh, and here we are, sigma equals positive one and omega equals zero. This, there's now a zero at that point. So it actually goes to zero, the value is zero. If we look inside, we can see down here, there's, the function is going to zero at sigma equals one and omega equals zero. So in there, there's now a zero. That's all I've done is introduce that zero. Well, what effect did it have in the frequency domain? Uh, much the same as it was before, uh, still a low pass filter. But in the case where the poles were further to the left along the bottom, we now have a completely different frequency response. And now instead of a low pass filter, it looks more like a band pass filter or starting to look like a band pass filter where higher frequency components are progressing through the filter, but some of the lower frequency components are being suppressed. So this is by, uh, we see the effect of moving the poles and we also see the effect of adding zeros. So something else that I want to just uh, show you is what happens when we have a different type of function. Uh, so this one here, uh, we'll run here with this function here. This function now, which we're showing on the top, so the, the three on the bottom are the same as before, and now I'm showing th uh, three different plots along the top, where we've got a transfer function now which has two poles and one zero. So the zero here is at s equals minus one, uh, and uh, the uh, pole here, there's two poles here. We can see the poles here clearly in the uh, figure. So there are those poles, and if we look straight from above, they are at minus, a real value of minus one, and imaginary values of minus three and plus three. Okay, so this is what our uh, Laplace transform function looks like now. And again, in the middle, I'm showing it only for the region of convergence, which is from minus one and positive. And again, we can look in and see there's the zero uh, at minus one comma zero. There's a real value of minus one. Uh, and now let's see in our frequency response on the top right, we have again a picture that looks like a bandpass filter. It has a different shape uh, to the one below, uh, more spiky shape here. And of course, this is affected by the locations of the poles, the location of the zero, uh, and especially relative to the sigma equals zero, which is where the Fourier transform is. And so this is two different ways to get similar uh, frequency responses by having uh, placing the poles, having complex poles which are off the axis or having poles which are on the axis but adding zeros. So hopefully you can uh, be interested and, and it helps informative to see and visualize these functions, particularly the relationship between Laplace and Fourier uh, and their, the impact on the Fourier transform, the impulse response that you get from a filter in your filter design. So don't forget to like this video if you found it useful, it helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. Uh, there's a pop-up circle face of, of me that you can click on to subscribe uh, and uh, you'll see more videos uh, below in the list. Plus there's a web page you can check out for the uh, text script for the MATLAB code that we've run in this video.